Hi guys and welcome to this continuation of the auto hotkey tutorials for beginners. In this video we're going to continue with the topic of the if and else statements and specifically with the um, operands. That's what we saw the last time, the and, or, and not operands. And in this case we're going to take a look at some other operands that we have available. So for that let me create a variable first. And if you remember we're just simply going to be using the if statement we're going to put the name of the variable without the percent signs and now we're going to do some tests on that particular variable. Um, in this case we're going to use the between operand which does exactly what the name says. It is going to check if the variable or actually the contents of the variable are um, within a range. So to make the range you just put the starting point of the range, the operand and and then the ending point of the range. So right now as you can see we're just testing if the variable which contains five, uh, 5 is between 1 and 10 which of course is true. If we run this particular code it is gonna return the message box true here. So the cool thing that you can do with this um, operand as well is that you can also test words or in other in other words you can use um, you can test strings to check if that particular string is alphabetically between two words like let's say for example you have the word testing here which is a string and you can check if that particular um, word or string is um, between for example emo and uh, ultra which are two random words that I just created so um, basically right now it's gonna say true because if you go and open your dictionary you will find that the word test is between those two words but if we put in here something like car I don't know you will see that it will be false so basically you can test not only numbers but also strings um, if they are within a specific range which you can specify like I just showed you so um, that one is pretty straightforward it is very easy to understand there's another operand that we have available which is the contain um, actually contains with an S at the end. Um, what it does, of course, as you can see, it is also um, pretty straightforward. We're going to check if our variable contains a specific list of terms or, well, you can test letters, numbers, words, whatever you want. So, what we're going to do is that we're going to test if, let's say, if our variable contains the letter T we can do that. But at the same time we can test several things at the same time. We can test if it contains the letter T, if it contains the word car, if it contains number 5, it doesn't matter. You can put a list separated by commas and mm, this particular operand is gonna check inside our variable and see if it contains one of those things. One noting here is that um, when you're using the contains um, operand, you will see that you do not have to match the whole word. For example, we have the word test in there and I can match the T only, as you can see. And if I run this, it is uh, it is going to return true because th um, our variable does contain a T inside. Actually, it contains two of them. So um, I'm making that note because um, in a few minutes I'm going to show you another operand that works similarly but it has a little limitation. So right now as you can see we can create a list. Um, a few notes on this is that um, if you put a space in between any of the words those spaces matter. So if let's do a test for example if I have TES and right now I put a space in there you know that by um, by definition, our word does contain TES. It does, but it does not contain that particular space that I just added. So uh, it will return false. So again, the, the spaces do matter. If you by mistake put a space in there, it's going to return false. Um, and the other thing is that you can create um, a very long list. For example, if you have if you want to test 200 things on one variable, you can do that you can put them one after the other if you want here but the best way to do that is actually creating a variable that contains your list separated by commas of course so you can test numbers if you want you can test words um, you know whatever you want you can test letters so you make your list and now in here in our in our 
test part in here, what we can put is just refer to that particular variable, but we're going to be using the percent signs in there. So that way you can create as many lists as you want, right? And they can be as long as you want. Of course, um, this is better than just simply writing everything out. It is um, more readable. Um, so right now, uh, I just showed you how you can use this particular operand. The other one, which is the in, um, in you just put, for example, in. Um, what it does is actually basically the same, but the, uh, the other way around. So we just checked if our variable contains any of the things that we listed in that particular list, right? What we can do is actually test it the other way around. We can test if our variable is in that particular list. So um, the limitation that this one has is that you cannot make a partial match like we did before. So right now our list does not contain the word test anywhere. So it's going to be returning false, right? But let's try putting TES as we did before. I don't know if you remember that when we were using the contains operand and we tested if it contained TES, it returned true because of course that particular word does contain that. But right now we're testing it backwards and it still returned false even though that particular our variable contains that. So it cannot be a partial match. Even if you put something like testing, which contains the word test in there, it is going to still return false because, as I mentioned, it will not do partial matching. So basically, you, if you have a list of things and you want to see if your variable is in that list, then you can do it this way, but you know, you must know that it will you cannot do partial matching here. So um, all these operands that I just showed have a very cool thing that you can do with them, is that you can actually um, negate, make a negation, um, of the test that you're doing. So for example, we can say if var not in list. In that way, we're going to be testing if, of course, if our variable is not there, which in this case is going to be returning um, false, of course, because we have it in here. But if it is not in there, it's going to be returning true. So you can do that with any of the of the of the operands that I just showed you. We can say if not contain, uh, if not contains, or is not if var not between, you can say all of that. So, you know, all those operands are very easy to understand. Now, there is um, another one that I'm, I'm going to be uh, uh, talking about in a few seconds, which is um, used to test if our variable is, a f is of a specific type. And if you have not programmed before this little concept, you have to learn it. Variables um, can be of different types. They can be, you know, strings, which is just pure words. Um, they can be integers, they can be float. The float is a type of variable that it is also a number, but it contains a decimal point. An integer does not contain decimal points. Um, and you know, there are different types. We can check that in the, in the, you can check that in the help file. But I'm just going to go over this very quickly. The way that you test if a variable is of a specific type is that you say if variable is and then you put right next to it the type that you want to test. I want to test if it's an integer. Then I just put integer. If I say run, it is going to be it is going to be telling me false because obviously this is a string, not not a number. And uh, you know, if I say for example, if it is alpha, which is the out of hot key way to say if it is a string, then it is going to be true because it is right. Now, if I put a number in here it is going to return false. The way that you test an alphanumeric string is if you put all num, which is alphanumeric is a very short way to say alphanumeric. And yeah, this is going to return true. One uh, few things that I wanted to show uh, specifically on this particular operand, because it might become very handy, is that you can test if your um, variable is uppercase. In this case, it's going to be saying that it's false. Let's make it uppercase. Let me see. Give me a second. There you go. So if it is upper, it is going to say true. If you put it, let's put it lowercases, and I can put in here lower. 
which is gonna test if it is lower cases and some other cool thing actually this particular um, operand has a lot of um, types that you can check and I will not have enough time to show you so um, it is good that you go to the help file and check on it um, very quickly you just simply open your help file and let me just simply take this up you just type if and in here you have the type so in here you can check that we have several types integer float number digit and you have a description in there of what do they mean and of course with this you can test what type of variable you're using and that might become very handy in some ex some cases so in the next video what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be making an example I'm gonna make a little program um, which in which we're gonna be recapping everything that we have learned until now but we're gonna be concentrating on the if and else statements which is the last topic that we just had so thank you guys for watching see you around um, comments on the on the forum or in here in the video and again I'm usually on the IRC channel just pass by and if you have any questions I will be glad to answer it see you guys later